G'day and welcome to Wine Week. I'm Danny. And I'm Brad. And this week I'm going to kick off with a wine that I've got good things to say about and bad things to say about at the same time. Mm -hmm. This, the Mount Pleasant Elizabeth. This is the 2006 Semillon. We've talked about this wine before on the show. The reason I kind of wanted to do it this week is I had a couple of O2s on the weekend at a bit of a family gathering. The O2 under cork, the O6 now under the screw cap. Uh, the two O2s that we opened up, absolutely dreadful. Terrible and such a shame. This is a great wine when it's at this sort of age, even, you know, four odd years old. When they're eight, 10, 12 years old, they are magnificent as long as they haven't been ruined by the cork. Now, this wasn't TCA, that cork taint, that kind of tastes like mouldy, mildewy sort of thing. This was oxidisation, air leaking down the side of the cork into the bottle and just basically killing the wine, making it flat, dull, terrible sorts of flavours. It was just spoiled and just so disappointing because this, a $10 odd wine, we picked this up under $10. Crazy. You know, the retail is a bit above that. But a $10 wine that you can sell it for 10 odd years is a ripper bargain and something you need to be grabbing hold of, sticking half a dozen of them under the bed. But now that they're under screw cap, you're going to be certain that even if you're just storing them under the bed, they're going to be in pristine condition in 10 odd years' time, not ruined like the O2s that I had on the weekend. So if you've got the wherewithal to just grab a few of these, do so. Under screw cap, absolutely beautiful. Toasty, beautiful flavours in 10 odd years' time. Gorgeous. Yeah, and I was talking to the guys at McWilliams about this wine a couple of years ago, and they really can't keep producing it at this price point because it is ridiculously good value. It should really be selling for at least double, maybe even three times what it is. Yeah. So jump on it now. A good age one should be $30 plus, no problems. 10 bucks? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> it's a bargain. <laughs> Okay, now moving on to a red wine bargain, and this is, uh, we've had a look at a couple of the Gramps uh, range before, but I don't think we've ever actually done the Shiraz, which mm. is probably really the Gramps um, flagship wine. Now when we say that, it's still a remarkably cheap wine. This, um, you know, gets discounted sub $15 in the big retailers, and when you're looking at that, it for the, the quality price ratio with this for a fantastic Barossa and Shiraz, it is absolutely remarkable. Now this particular one is the 2006, there are some ripping 2006 Shiraz from the Barossa Valley. Now this actually picked up the Big Red Wine book, the 0910 version, so last year's book, their commercial red bargain of the year, and it really does live up to that expectation. And the best thing about it, it's it's a wine that's not that expensive, but this will age really well too. If you can uh, get a six pack of this, just put them away for a few years and bring them out over the next uh, next five, six years, it'll be fantastic drinking. So Gramps, it is a, a range that's still under the Orlando label, so look out for it and uh, you can do far worse than getting this 2000 and six Shiraz. Yeah, tremendous value. And if while well, the 06 is still around, do grab hold of one. Now, last thing that we're going to look at this week, not a wine, an application. An application that runs on the Mac and an application that runs on the iPhone. This is the Vinoteca software. Um, look, a while back we looked at the seller app for the iPhone, which is a great application if you're a average wine consumer, somebody that wants to remember what it was that they had on a Friday night with their mates, you know, take a photo of the bottle, add some details in it, throw it into the cellar in the phone and you'll know that you'll get that same bottle next time you're looking for something. But if you're a bit more of a wine buff or a wine wanker as some people call <laughs> us, you might have hundreds if not thousands of bottles in your cellar and you might need something that's just a little bit more complex and a little bit more easy to operate on a large scale and this is certainly it. This is so far the best application I've seen on the iPhone that links up to your Mac for cellaring and keeping control of a large cellar. In fact, the details on this are so long and involved that it's probably easier if you've got both because you can just run it on one or the other, but it's easier to enter in all of the details on the Mac because, look, you're talking about alcohol levels, optimum serving temperatures, tasting notes, apogees of drinking your best between this year and this year as well as, you know, available to drink until a further date. It really is fully complex, a beautiful looking application in most regards. There's still a couple of teething issues on it that I'm sure they'll work through. 
because uh, it's only just hit the App Store. But like all iPhone apps, you get free updates on the uh, the point releases, and they've already had a single point release on this as an update, and it just keeps improving piece by piece. Ripping app, I should say, it's about eight dollars in the Australian App Store. The Mac software about fifty USD. Um, and as I say, if you've got a large seller, or at least you're right into your wines and you're intending to build a large seller, this may well be the best piece of software on the iPhone and the Mac going around at the moment. So have a look for it. Yeah, look, I'll be honest, it certainly beats my access database that I'm running to keep track of my uh, seller at the moment, so I'm thinking of switching to a Mac. Yeah, very <laughs> good. Moving him to the right side of the road. Anyhow, that's it for this week on Wine Week. We'll see you all again next week. See you next week.